I know, I've been gone for a couple days and that's uh, all I think. I actually have had this massive headache for two days. It feels like a meat hook has been inserted into my right temple and it's coming out of my eyeball and it has not gotten any better. And so I thought that it would and took some time and rested and all the jazz and it's not working. So I'm here with you regardless and I'm fine. I'm fine. It's not like an aneurysm or some other thing. I don't need, I don't need you to worry. Everybody calm down. I'm going to be fine. It's just a headache, probably pressure related, according to JJ. And she knows everything. We are not talking about headaches or ways that you can cure them today on the channel, but I probably will be giving myself a bigger headache because we are going to be continuing on with rose infusions and trying to get through this very long uh, outline that I have formed for this month's content. So, you know, fingers crossed that I managed to get some of that out today. I will tell you more about the infusions that we are making today in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for another day of rose infusions, wherein we are talking about the rose petals specifically, all of the extracts that the, you can get from the rose petals. So your essential oils, what is in the rose essential oil, your you know antioxidants, all of the jazz, and also how you can extract them. Now we have done an infusion method. We did that a couple days ago, and we used uh, green tea seed oil for the infusion with both white and red rose petals. Now from everything that I can tell with the infusions with that white versus red, there's no actual compound difference between a red rose and a white rose if you were doing an infusion in this way. But that said, as I have been saying throughout this, we don't have a lot of information on roses and a lot of studies. Why don't we have a lot of studies? Well, one of the reasons we don't have a lot of studies is because essential oils, first and foremost, those are widely misunderstood and sometimes just discredited as a result component in the scientific world because it's one of those things where aromatherapy comes into play or you know you start working with your placebo effects and it works if you believe in it and so for that reason there is limited research regarding essential oils generally another reason why we don't have a lot of research within all of this is because it's not something that enough people have cared about to research you know it's kind of like most of the things within the soap making world which is why i try to do what i do on this channel and give the research that i have found and all of the information that i have acquired over my years of you know actually the education field and you know doing this here with you as well as running the soap business and give that to you in hopefully a concise manner so you have something to reference as well as the articles and everything that I'm turning to for this information to help demystify soap making, which is not something that we ever actually get a whole lot of information about generally. And so that's what we are going to continue doing today and talking about the infusions that I have tried to do with Rose for this segment. And we are going to be working with uh, alcohol infusions. So a 90% isopropyl alcohol, as well as a glycerin infusion. Now, back when we were doing coffee in January, the coffee bean itself, it loved to give up all of its beautiful components, all of its skin loving stuff. It very easily and readily gave that up into whatever extraction method we decided to go with. That has not been the case with rose so far. Rose petals themselves do not have a lot of oils in them anyway. And so we're going to be running into a problem with that just right off the bat. But this infusion method, while we are doing this, I do want to talk about the pros and cons of doing it within an alcohol as well as within a glycerin, whether or not you can heat your glycerins so you can help uh, release some of the essential oils within the rose, and whether or not you're going to be 
hurting or damaging any of the components that you can get from this botanical. Because remember, like I said a few days ago, sometimes that is the case. Sometimes we have very fragile elements within our botanicals that might be damaged by alcohols or heat. I'm going to tell you whether or not that's the case today, as well as show you what my end results were of what ultimately ended up being like a seven week infusion process. So let's get to the video and we can do all of that there. Okay, so actually first up in the extractions, we are going to be doing some water extractions because you know, that's a very easy one to do. We know that it's possible because rose tea is a whole thing. But I did want to ask, actually talk about a couple things that people have been asking in the first two videos while we do this. First up is going to be dried petals versus fresh petals. You can totally use dried. I am using dried. If you saw the video that we did when we did the rose stuff last year, I used dried petals that were purchased from like Brambleberry or something and it, they released a crazy amount of oil. And that's just, this is not me just being anecdotal. I did actually look this up and yeah, so dried rose petals, they're also going to be, they're going to contain all of the oil that a rose petal normally would. So all of the benefits from your polyphenols and everything as well, because dried rose petals did not go through the extraction process in any way, shape or form. So you just have the dried version of them. So definitely an option there. Now, another thing that was brought up a lot was uh, questions about temperature, because we do know that with a lot of our essential oils, the temperature can have an impact on whether or not they are still beneficial or if you're going to be damaging some of the compounds. Now, for roses in general, we don't have a lot of really good scientific information to say that it does or does not, because it's not something that's been studied a whole lot. From what we can tell, I mean, science has basically said that the uh overall uh, temperature where all botanicals could theoretically be injured would be at around 104 degrees however that said rose tea it's a whole thing steam distillation degrees above 212 above the boiling point of water it's a whole thing uh extraction using your solvents is going to be a temperature of around 140 ish degrees and uh, so and that's actually the better way to extract all of the oil from a rose petal so as far as whether or not this uh, damages rose well if it does damage the rose essential oil that is inside of it then that means everything that we have ever purchased has been damaged because cold press is not really an option for rose petals cold press is going to be the process of essentially not using heat and using well uh, some sort of form of pressing to get the oil out not a lot of the oil within a rose so it's going to be a tough time to do it so i would say to all of that if you were concerned about temperature and you would like to use some sort of cold method i would say that an infusion a cold infusion with water or an oil is going to be your best bet or the alcohol or the glycerin that we are going to be working with today because those things as long as they are not exposed to temperatures above 104 degrees according to you know just the general rule or whatever are going to be just fine now, this is a hot infusion with the rose petals, and I put about a cup's worth of petals in, so three, you know, total heads of the roses to 16 ounces of water. And this was the end result after a 12 hour period. So as you can see, it definitely releases quite a bit with very little effort into the rose in a passive transport, you know, system. And so for that, I, it's, a, it's a great method to use. You can now use that for in your cosmetics. You can use that within your soap itself. So use this in place of the water. That said, if you are going to be using it within your cosmetics, I highly recommend using a preservative system at the right pH. The pH of this is neutral. So make sure that your preservative system is going to be with, within the appropriate pH ranges and also refrigerate it because we do have botanicals in there now so things might get wonky it's better safe than sorry if you are taking this directly to your lye solution and you're going to make your lye solution out of your rose water then yeah you don't need to do any of this but that said you didn't need to do the extra step of you know taking it in a different container or whatever you could just put the rose petals directly into your water put your lye on it you know bada bing bada boom you're ready to go you understand rose water we'll definitely be playing with this within our cosmetics as well within our as within our soaps as well in the coming weeks. So definitely stay tuned for that. Let's go on to the rest of the infusions.
Now, two more infusions with all of this, and we are going to talk about the potential downsides to them as well, as well as also address a little bit more on the colors. So, like I said at the beginning, the colors that, from what we can tell, the colors of the rows is not really going to impact the actual components that were within the rows. It can affect and impact taste, however. So, that is all the information that I was able to find as to whether or not a red or a white rose was going to be more beneficial uh it was all for taste and within teas and so everything that i found within this within roses themselves the essential oils have been analyzed there's actually nothing different that would cause uh that would actually be uh, well different within our uh, cosmetics or within our soaps and so white roses red roses do your thing this does have a benefit though if you're using a white rose for your soaps if you used a white rose infusion, the uh, actual water that you would get from a white rose would be lighter in color. Not clear, not like water, but it would be lighter in color, more of an amber color. And so if you wanted to work with white, you know, lye solution to ensure that you're getting a nice white soap, if that's what you're after, you can certainly do that. Now, this is an interesting thing. I did not have high hopes with the glycerin extractions here. So what I did was same thing. I took, you know, about a cup of the rose petals, so about three of the heads, and I pressed them into my infuser here. And now I'm just going to pour the glycerin over until everything is covered and that little, uh, well, that strainer thing is also submerged completely within the glycerin. This ended up taking seven weeks until any movement was made, until I could tell any reasonable difference between the glycerin with the rose infusion or just regular glycerin. Now, what was I looking for with a difference? Well, obviously I was looking for color because we had the red, uh, the red roses within all of this, but also I was looking for any signs of oil within the solution itself. And it took about seven weeks until that occurred. And let's show you what I mean right now. Okay, so the big reveal for both the glycerin and the alcohol infusion. And as I said, about seven weeks later, did I actually see anything done? And what I saw within the rose petals themselves within this one is that they were very, very pale. They were like a very light pink, flecks of purple within all of it, and definite oil separation within all of this. You can see both the glycerin and the oil within it. And so, yes, it worked as an infusion for sure. Is it a potent infusion? I would say probably not because we know so what we do know about roses is that it does take a whole lot of petals in order to actually get a large amount of oil from the rose petals themselves. And me just using you know, three heads of a rose, I'm going to go ahead and say it's not a very potent one uh, for sure. But, you know, I mean, working with dried petals may be a better solution with all of this because you can fit more in your infuser. You can continue to just press things down as they sort of start to degrade and break down. It's an option for sure. But it is a weak solution in, in an infusion all the same. So that did work. So we will be using that within our cosmetics. And we will talk about what I think of them within cosmetics when it's all said and done. This is going to be very similar to what you're going to get from your rose extracts as far as actual potency though, as I do not believe the rose extracts have ever been touted to be super duper potent, which is not true of all extracts. Some extracts are very, very concentrated, but with my memory on when I was purchasing rose extracts, they were kind of weak sauce. So with the glycerin, there's no real problems that you would need to worry about with it damaging any of the goodness of the rose petal of the essential oil. Well, that's not really the case with the alcohol, however, because there was quite a breakdown process that was going on in all of that. Now, earlier I talked about a couple days ago in the video, the breaking down of the rose petal, damaging of the rose petal, that's not really a problem when it comes to roses. It can be a problem for other essential oils that we might work with within you know, our soap making or our cosmetics making. Rose actually does benefit from the breaking down, so it's easier to extract all of that oil. So I'm not concerned about the damage to the petals while I'm doing anything like this. I'm also not concerned about the damage to the components by via the alcohol because that's usually what's going to be used as some sort of, you know, solvent extraction when you are doing 
your well your solvent extractions so i'm not concerned about it and as you can see we do have something here what is that something i don't know it could just be color i don't see anything else in this to suggest that any oils survived and so perhaps i am concerned i don't know we're going to find out whether or not the alcohol extraction is going to be useful within all of this i do actually have high hopes it interestingly did smell like flowers there was a a hint of that within the the alcohol when you could get past the alcohol and definitely once the alcohol dissipated you could tell as well so maybe we'll see but there again both of these took seven long weeks so far rose has not been fun at all so first up, I know that I did not say at the beginning that we were going to be doing rose water. I decided to incorporate that one into this guy so I can have a separate video just dedicated to rose hip tomorrow. But yeah, rose water, we obviously know that's going to be an easy one to do because we make rose tea. That's a thing. Uh, for the usage of that, if you are going to put that in a cosmetic, I highly recommend you put a preservative in it for sure. Now putting it into a soap, you don't need that preservative because it's going directly into your lye solution and you're going to be and going directly into soap and you don't have to worry about any sort of nasties growing within that environment so you should be good to go there for the glycerin and the alcohol extractions i mean they turn colors and if that's all it takes to show that they are you know valid or whatever then cool it's valid it took seven weeks it's a big pain in the butt so I don't really know that it's going to be the best method, but we will be using these within products in the coming weeks so you can see what I ultimately decide on all of that. Now, for the infusions taking a very long time, we will be talking more about infusion systems within next week's videos while we make the soaps with all of these things. So stay tuned for that. And tomorrow, as I said, we're going to be doing a rose hip day. So that is going to be a very exciting one for me. I really have grown to love rosehip in all forms and so I'm very much excited to do the infusions and talk about that process and talk about why I believe for soap making at least this is going to be the better way to get all the beautiful benefits of your rose hip into your soaps and the week after that you know obviously we're going to be doing soaps and this cosmetic all the things. We're continuing on with the rose journey. For everybody that exists and is here, hello Sudzers, you are awesome, thank you very much for being here and for existing. I hope your weekend is going well. I hope you guys are ready for some sports ball tomorrow. It's gonna be awesome. I, um, yeah, all the things. I hope you guys don't have massive headaches. I know some of you have snow right now and that's weird, you know, but also it's February, so it's not that weird. Anyway, I'm gonna go. Uh, my headache is not getting any better. These lights are not making it any better. So I'm out of here, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of rose infused soapy fun in the form of rose hips. Bye.